Hello, I'm Kenton McHenry. I'm the Associate Director for Software at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. And today I'm going to talk about the EarthCube Geocodes effort. EarthCube is a program started by NSF around 2012 to advance cyber infrastructure for the geosciences. It's done this by supporting the development of tools and data resources, standards and such, uh, to kind of advance the infrastructure available for scientific research in geoscience where data and software and computation are important these days. Uh, oh, to date, roughly 95 efforts have been funded across these various kind of domains. With such endeavors, there's typically a number of challenges. One in particular is that when uh, these developments occur for new tools or new uh, data resources, once the funding ends, what happens to them? Are they still available? Can folks access them? There's aspects of sustainability. Additionally, uh, exposure. You know, once these things are developed, do, how, how widely are they exposed so that people can know they exist and can reuse them? And, and ideally not duplicate efforts that have already been done. Uh, and other aspects such as packaging so that these things are runnable and documented and, and so forth. And so to address this, uh, the EarthQ program has typically had an office associated with it. And for the current eco office, this was represented by the folks here, made up by uh, folks from four different institutions representing software developers, scientists, and uh, folks involved in UI UX design. And what we basically do is we work with the community to try to uh, capture these artifacts uh, and uh, kind of try to improve how they're, they're reused uh, for science. As one would imagine, one of the primary focuses of the office has always been that of data, uh, in, in particular around the various data repositories and data sources available for geoscience data. And these are represented here by a number of uh, repositories, uh, which make up this uh, group uh, we could refer to as the Council of Data Facilities. A key effort within the CDF, the Council of Data Facilities and EarthCube, has been the adoption of schema.org. And what that is, is basically what you kind of see here is this uh, really HTML, uh, JSON LD within uh, HTML to kind of annotate uh, an HTML page for a repository representing what data is, metadata is available uh, within a particular data set. What this allows is for something to come by and basically crawl an entire repository and index the data within multiple repositories much like Google would. And in fact, Google does do this. It, it, it uses schema.org to crawl uh, data sets in its data set search. But the idea here is to kind of focus on geoscience specific aspects uh, with regards to not only data, but tools and visualizations and other aspects around it. And it is this effort that is referred to as geocodes, basically this uh, open source piece of code that does both of these aspects. One is uh, uh, that uh, Gleaner, which basically is the crawler, that builds the index and the portal aspect of it, uh, which uh, uh, basically like a, a simple little Google search page for searching for geoscience data. This is the pilot effort that was initially developed. And uh, what I'll show later is the, the, rev the revised version of that. But before I do that, I want to talk about the tool side of things just a little bit. So with regards to tools, there's also been a number of efforts within EarthCube to wrangle those uh, from the EarthCube to tools inventory to the now EarthCube resource registry. The challenge here has always been the aspect of this, uh, the amount of effort required to get tools and the documentation around them, the metadata, to make this kind of resource useful. Uh, it's required really the office itself to be very hands-on in terms of working with projects to get information in there. In terms of sustainability, this isn't really sustainable long-term because the idea is that the EarthCube office would not always be there. Uh, these things should sustain within themselves within the community. So what do you do about that? So one thing that we've uh, tried is basically really try to incentivize the community in terms of doing this uh, documentation of tools, this encapsulation of tools so that they're runnable, reusable uh, uh, themselves. And the way we've done this is by this effort to basically uh, make um, leverage these uh, Jupyter notebooks that are prevalent these days or notebooks in general. Uh, and uh, put an aspect of uh, peer review around them to incentivize uh, the community to want to put these out there in the sense that these are then for um, scholarly objects, publications that you could then uh, cite on your CVs. We issued our first call for notebooks as part of our annual meeting in 2020, and it was a bit of an experiment. We weren't sure if the community would be interested in this kind of thing, but we wanted to try it because if, it, if they were, this was a great way of kind of capturing these tools uh, so that they could be more easily readily reused. So that initial call for notebooks uh, basically was pretty open-ended. It could be any kind of notebook, Jupyter, R, uh, uh, others. Uh, and the idea was it really had to emphasize some sort of geoscience question with regards to some tool around it and how that tool kind of uh, helped that research. Um, we were pleasantly surprised that uh, this community did seem interested in this kind of thing. And so we ended up having 21 submissions uh, to our call for notebooks. All of them ended up being Jupyter. 
Um, that did make it a little bit easier in one aspect to review uh, because it was just one technology. Um, we pulled together our uh, review committee from the, from, uh, the community, uh, uh, made up of both geoscientists and folks involved in cyber infrastructure, and we worked to get two to three reviews per notebooks. Uh, we ended up accepting 12 of the notebooks and uh, five as oral presentations, and uh, we ended up publishing with uh, AGU uh, using their eSource system to host the final notebooks and uh, provide a DOI for them. And we did this again in 2021 and got even more uh, uh, involvement. We ended up having uh, 44 abstracts, uh, what are intents to submit notebooks, but with 33 final submissions, uh, we needed far more reviewers. So we more than doubled the number of reviewers we recruited for this uh, and ended up accepting 19 uh, uh, notebooks to send along two tracks, one science focused and one more tool focused uh, and 11 as oral presentations. And overall, so those calls for notebooks really provided a way for a sustainable way for the community to kind of capture these uh, tool artifacts from the scientific community in a reusable manner. And so uh, um, the idea here is with regards to back to the geocodes, uh, uh, which I'll talk about again shortly, uh, is a, a basically a way of collecting these tools um, uh, without office involvement for sustainability, but a way of collecting tools that could potentially be used with data sources, which is something that's pretty important these days. Data by itself isn't useful without the tools and computation to do anything with it. Uh, one more aspect we've looked at to uh, capture tools is uh, the throughput effort. This is actually an EarthCube funded project. Uh, and what it, what it does is it actually goes through GitHub repositories and looks for, it crawls them looking for associations with data sets. And so this is another means by which we find identified tools that are um, uh, relevant to geoscience. So going back to the geocodes effort. So basically what we had is this pilot, uh, again, basically the, the crawler and this demonstration portal. Uh, and the idea was to kind of put these together um, um, uh, in such a way to kind of highlight and demonstrate the usefulness of schema.org and being able to crawl these different data sets. And again, along the gateways aspect, of, uh, what we really focused on is really incorporating the tools as well. Uh, to bring in the tools that are associated with data sets, finding them along with the data, and ideally being able to use them. Another key aspect of the work that we've done in the past couple years is uh, to really incorporate UI UX design uh, by professional designers, uh, to really uh, really polish the interface such that it's there's a lot of data present, but you don't want to be bombarded by that all at once. You want to be able to navigate uh, that space. So really to simplify the interface, to kind of hide away things initially so that they're not all in your face at one time, uh, but still available if you want to kind of dig into uh, data sets uh, and tools. And, uh, and so also, in addition, well, the way this kind of worked is by working with the EarthCube community, in particular, the EarthCube Leadership Council, made up from scientists from within the community, um, and really flesh out some user stories in, ter in terms of what folks would do with such a resource and identify other needs. And one of those was basically it would be really useful to find related data sets. Uh, in addition to the data set you search for. And so that was another aspect that we incorporated into uh, the next iteration of this geocodes effort. So what came from this is a design uh, and a layout, as you see here, provided to us by our designers. Uh, and then it was left to the tech team to kind of implement this. So if you would like to try this out, you could go here to uh, geocodes.earthcube.org and you'll get this page, which looks like your very uh, basic search page uh, where you can actually search for geoscience data. Uh, crawled with, across these different repositories and tools uh, that are uh, provided as well. So if you type something in, what you get is uh, 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 results that kind of look like this. Uh, again, on the left here, it's broken up by um, uh, data and, uh, and tools uh, and other resource types. Uh, and you can uh, expand these different facets here and get, uh, do other aspects of searches, uh, such as searching by keywords, uh, locations, uh, and date published, and so forth. So before we look at the results page, I want to try one, another kind of search, in this case, uh, searching for Ridgecrest earthquakes in 2019, uh, just to kind of highlight that in addition to results that show data and tools indicated by these little bullets down here, once in a while you'll get a, a, a case where there's a, a little bullet indicating a connected tool. And this is a case where there's been a match found with, with regards to a tool and a data set. So I'll show you that when we look at the results. So if you click on the results, you get more information about the, the particular data set, uh, how to cite it, an abstract, and so forth. Uh, and if you scroll down, you'll see uh, tools that are related to that data set. Uh, you can click on each one of these things to get more information about the tools. Again, pulling uh, information with regards to the tools in the resource registry or a notebook or so forth, ideally at some point. Uh, and you can actually click on these buttons to actually go to the web page of the tool and download them if desired. 
So uh, with regards to the tools, there's uh, two kinds of tools, really, those that you download uh, and those that are actually web tools. So in this particular search here, uh, what I would get is, again, different results with regards to, with regards to connected tools to data sets. Uh, but in this case, uh, when you go to the results and scroll down, you'll see that there is uh, downloadable tools as before, but also web applications. Uh, these are tools that can be open in the web. And in, in this case, uh, when you click on it, you, we can do interesting things like actually load the data right into the tool uh, so that the user can start doing things uh, with the data uh, directly on the portal. And then there's lastly our latest work with regards to the notebooks we've been collecting. Uh, and so what we've been doing there is uh, basically adding an additional button here with regards to the data sets to just go ahead and open a notebook. Uh, by default, this will open a, a generic notebook that's ready to go in terms of already having the data set loaded into it for you. And then you can start doing stuff with it, such as visualizations and, and other things. But the idea long term will be to actually incorporate these notebooks we're getting from the calls from notebooks and elsewhere uh, with the data sets that uh, they match up with. So to conclude, the Geocode's effort has really been to kind of uh, exemplify the usefulness of adopting things like schema.org uh, and lately uh, of Jupyter Notebooks to kind of uh, uh, capture tools. Um, but long term, the goals are to basically have this, uh, the software itself, this uh, open source framework, uh, be leverageable as a way of kind of standing up community gateways uh, that bring together data and tools and visualizations and others in a customizable manner for different specific communities uh, to, to work with their data. Uh, so thank you.